ourselves and to demean ourselves. But at the uh, back of our mind, we do know that there is no such thing as enlightenment at all, you know, really. <coughs> we do know that, um, um, that there are um, very inspiring uh, things that, that pops up every now and then, um, that moves us, that uh, um, moves us in a way not just into uh, into tears or into um, um, sort of moving our hairs this way and that way, but in a way that um, mm, that it creates the right spark, sort of thing. And so therefore, this is really uh, these occasions that we create every now and then, or annually. Uh, it's a very, very wi uh, wishful thing to do. And um, I implore them, I mean, I respect them. Um, I respect the organizers because uh, I have asked them if they can do it, and they are confused, of course, <laughs> to begin with. But somehow I try to sort of um, uh, inject some sort of enthusiasm in them, and then they do, they do it. And then they do it, I don't know whether it's because of devotion or whether because of love for the practice, I really don't know. But somehow they come up with the immense energy to do it and then they realize it and here we are you know it's not about the numbers it's not about the quality it's not about the quantity but we are here and um, I don't know what this streaming thing is doing actually <laughs> um, in terms of quantity and quality I really don't know whether it's increasing or decreasing that aspect, I really don't know, but nevertheless, they're doing something. Um, these organizers, volunteers, uh, devotees, um, whether they are of uh, from the monastic uh, society or whether they are from the lay society, I don't know, but nevertheless, they are able to <coughs> create this rumor sort of thing, you know that something is doing something <laughs> or someone's uh, doing <laughs> um, something strange and so therefore we are here and um, um, all I can say is I appreciate and um, then through this uh, um, curiosity, um, not to say really devotion or love or care, if that's there, great, if that's not there, doesn't matter, but there is that uh, undivided curiosity, undivided um, <coughs> or concentrated curiosity, and therefore why we are here. Um, <coughs> I really wonder um, uh, sometimes if the settings were different, how it will be. But nevertheless, we are here. And so therefore, um, by taking the opportunity of such uh, gathering, then I'm basically saying that um, um, if it is Shine we want, if it is Shamata we want, if it is um, compassion we want, if it is enlightenment we want, obviously it's possible. Um, anything is possible. Uh, just like good weather, you know. <laughs> um, we can hope for it, and at some point it will come true. But will we be happy with it? I don't know, and nobody knows. 
It's the same thing. Enlightenment is not really something rare. Um, to the real meditators, they know that it's happening probably constantly. But um, the occurrence of that enlightenment, probably it's not really surprising or amazing to most of us. And so therefore, the reason why they meditate is to somehow um, to understand why, I suppose. I mean, there are many reasons, but probably one of the reasons is to, to see why we are not sort of curious. So, um, to um, make it a rhythm, to make it an everyday routine in terms of, for example, the practice of Shini every day, I think it's not really possible. Um, but having said that, then of course we have uh, these sort of questions and doubts, then why, why are we uh, trying to practice Shini? And the simplest answer is really none other than and these are means, methods, skillful means to, to make us uh, somehow r um, understand and realize um, I, I really don't know what is the proper English word to say, but to make us um, Um, realize why um, why we have to do this sort of thing actually um, I think when we are in a sort of um, uh, stage where let's say when we were children, um, we are not completely used to the, to the adult way of thinking and so therefore um, um, we are somehow in between the two different realities in terms of the adult reality and the <coughs> uh, reality of the children's and somewhere in between you have these um, ideas that um, why uh, that um, we don't really need to sort of force our ways uh, uh, ways to uh, do various I mean to do anything actually it's constantly happening all the time um, just like weather that uh, constantly that there are good weathers and bad weathers um, that they are constantly happening, and we don't really need to do anything about it. But uh, slowly, slowly, as we become, the, um, or as we enter into this sort of so called adulthood, then we feel like we have an control over everything else. And as a result of it, um, that's how it changes, that we feel that enlightenment or forget enlightenment, that Shine is something that we need to control, that it has to happen uh, from our control, from our sort of um, control of being able to switch on and switch off as we like. And so that's the thing. Um, if we are used to that idea, then the sad news is that we will never ever be able to actually uh, relate to the idea of practice of Shine because we can never switch on and switch off Shine at all. Um, <coughs> that um, either when we are happy or when we are not happy, if you wish to switch on Shine at home or at work, it's not possible. It doesn't work like that. Um, it's like a relationship in a way, where whether it's
between your friends or family or colleague or anything that um, uh, we have labeled it in such a way that um, that they can happen this uh, friendship or whatever ship um, uh, can take or uh, can help us at the push of a button sort of thing of course it doesn't work yes um, <clears throat> it requires a lot of commitment a lot of dedication and so on same thing in the case of um, let's say shamata same thing um, it has to happen um, not necessarily to how much uh, percentage of time that was dedicated to it and so therefore I have to have a fair value not in that sense but in the sense that um, uh, conceptually we dedicate that much time of practice for example in here in this setting where we have a few days of meditation this is just really, uh, as I said, the organizers, some of the organizers would know because some of them are practitioners, but some of them are not. But those who are practitioners, they would know that this is really an ambitious project because you cannot really, really expect for us to appreciate what meditation is, what shamatha is, or what Vipassana is in just a few days. Impossible. Even for those who spend uh, so, so many number of years um, and so on, or so many number of lives. Uh, and this is not a way to sort of um, decrease our inspiration at all. Mm, but in short, what it is saying is there is no guarantee. Even if you spend several lifetimes, there's no guarantee. And so that's the, that's the challenge, I think. Um, we cannot expect to understand shamatha uh, based on guarantee, not really based on um, a certain limit. Yeah. It's not guaranteed. So that's why I said relationship. Relationships are not never ever guaranteed. No matter whether we are siblings or whether we, whether we are twins, you know, whether we are even Siamese twins or whatever. There's no guarantee. Uh, it has to happen. That's why uh, it says like it has to happen by itself. When we say that, it sounds like we have to leave it to chance, we have to leave it to luck. That's the extreme, you know. But that's not what is really um, meant for it. That it has to happen, um, probably the English word is to say by itself, naturally. <coughs> so, yeah, uh, whether it's Tibetan or English or any language, there is no real way to describe that process. 